perhaps it's a stupid idea, but you can make capacitors of very low values quite easily. And um, I want to demonstrate one of them that I made, also other ones anyway. Uh, these are two small tin plates. And you can um, solder on the back side a wire. And then for experimental purposes you can make a dielectricum. In this case it is a very thin piece of plastic. Uh, you can also use for instance cello tape here. And I found that perhaps interesting to tell that this material also forms a very good dielectricum <coughs> in such a capacitor. Uh, we know that when the capacitor plates are moving um, outwards from each other, the capacitance goes down. And uh, when the capacitor plates, these two plates, are very close, the capaci uh, capacitance goes up. And of course it has also to do the total capacitance of such a self-made capacitor has to do uh, <coughs> with the surface, how big that surface is in centimeters. And in the past, in old Dutch books, we find, for instance, capacitor values not in farad or picofarad, but in centimeter, centimeter, say in books of the 1920s. And one centimeter is approximately uh, one picofarad. Uh, it, uh, the deviation is approximately, as far as I know, 10%. So uh, one picofarad is 0 0.9 centimeter. Anyway, um, you can use, for instance, different materials. I've showed the, um, the plastic. This is normal paper. And uh, what I wanted to tell is because this material is extremely thin, the two plates get very close together. And then that means that the capacitance uh, goes up compared to other materials. By the way, I found that this material and paper, normal paper, quite thin, uh, had approximately the same um, dielectric value. Though the plastic was somewhat better. I'm going to show now how to do an experimental setup for such a capacitor. Um, here are the two plates. I have here this thing, plastic in between. Now we have made a small capacitor condenser. And it works. I can show it on the meter. I will do that. And now hook it up to the meter. The schematic of that meter is by the way on my YouTube channel and how I made it. So now it's here. That capacitor And we can read on the meter that it is approximately 20 picofarad with this plastic inside. So let's test um, another dielectricum. Um, this is that material that I showed. Very thin. It has aluminium in it, but as far as I could see that must be completely encapsulated in plastic, because otherwise we would have a shortcut. So this is now the experimental capacitor. Hook it up to the capacitance meter. And we read now approximately 50 picofarad. 
I think it has to do with the, uh, the thickness of the material. Because this is uh, less thick, this material, the capacitance goes somewhat up. Anyway, these capacitors can be used in radio circuits. I'm not sure uh, whether they will be very <coughs> reliable. I think they will be. Because, in fact, it doesn't differ much from, say, such a capacitor. This is, for instance, typical radio capacitor. These are two aluminum, say, kind of tubes. In fact, we have here the same. This is also a plate. And this is another part of the plate. And when you screw, when you put it on the screw, the plates move opposite to each other and the capacitance changes. So these are simple experiments. Uh, my next experiment will be to glue this capacitor together with this kit, Polymax. And I hope to have a fixed capacitor of approximately, say, 50 picofarad or so. Hope that it works. And, of course, when you study old radio books, there's a lot of theory about how capacitors were made in the past. For instance, two strips of aluminum foil. And you can really use that. Two strips of aluminum foil. Uh, isolation material in between could be paper or cello tape, and then um, you can make yourself a capacitor. Of course, not the big values. I could go to approximately 2 nanofarad, so 2000 picofarad. That's, of course, not much, but it's an interesting, um, say, experiment. And the formulas. Uh, how to calculate the um, uh, a capacitor with the dielectrical material, the surface, and the distance between the plates are surely on the World Wide Web.